Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're an OG of the channel, you'll remember this one. It's time for the Champions League. And I am so excited to see Chelsea kick off their Champions League campaign against Dinamo Zagreb away from home. This is going to be a crazy game. Mateo Kovacic used to play there and spoke about the atmosphere that it's going to be absolutely incredible. We have an early kickoff, so apologies for the late upload time. Hopefully you guys still have time to watch this. In this video, I'm going to go through both managers' sets of comments ahead of the game in their presser, Mateo Kovacic's comments as well, and my predicted starting 11 for this match based off of how Chelsea played against West Ham and just who I think should be starting this game, maybe who I want to see more of and hopefully reason out how we're going to go about this. So I'm using my phone data because we have people sorting the Wi-Fi. You guys know I literally always have Wi-Fi issues. So we have people at the house sorting it now. Uh, so hopefully this goes okay. <laughs> Alrighty, so I am going to share my screen and I am going to start here. So first off, I'm reading Thomas Trico's presser. This is from Football Lonson. I love um, this. It's not really a newspaper because it's online, but they have really great articles. They'll always have every single word from Thomas Tuchel's press conference and just really great articles and a great team as well. So definitely check them out if you're not aware of this. But first question he was asked was, what do you think of the challenge Dinamo Zagreb bring? And I did look up and it says that it's pronounced Dinamo, but I could be wrong. So please correct me if I'm wrong. I said, they are used to winning. It's a winning team. They are used to be on the top. That shapes a certain mentality. They made it through qualification, which is never easy. They deserve to be here. I'm pretty sure they will plan to play a very technical, emotional game against us. They have individual quality, like always, like every team of Dinamo Zagreb and any Croatian team. A lot of individual quality. Up front, they have speed and dribbling on the wings. They will use the role as the underdog to overperform and make us underperform. This will be their plan. We are aware of that. I think that's something super interesting that Thomas Tuchel focused on because Chelsea, I feel like, tend to play better for some reason when they're the underdogs. And we've seen that against teams in the top six and in the Champions League as well. We have maybe our best performances when we're the underdogs. And I feel like I don't I don't know if it's the stress of being expected to win or what it is, but I feel like when we're expected to win, then that's when we tend to not perform as great. So it's really interesting to me that Thomas Tuchel is aware of that and mentioned that in his press conference. He was asked about if he's concerned about VAR. I don't want to talk too much on it, but I just thought that it was funny that he said, what can I say now to be clear at the same time and not pay a fine again? Where is the line? Um, yeah, Thomas Tuchel spot on. Some words on Reese James's contract extension. He said, of course, I'm happy. He's a very decisive player for us, and he's an academy player. We told you many times how important he is. I think his development is far from over. There's a lot to learn from him and a lot to come. We're happy to have a key player with us for so many years. So Reese James signed a contract extension, five years plus an option of a six-year. I have a feeling we're going to see him at Chelsea for a very, very long time. And I believe that this contract extension does make him Chelsea's highest paid defender. The number I saw floating around was around 250 K and very well deserved. Reese James is probably one of the most important players for us on the pitch. So I am super, super excited to see him get this contract extension. So the next question was, is he fit enough to start? When I first read this, I read it as Reese James. I think maybe it could also relate to Kovacic. I haven't seen a clarification um, because both of them have kind of been struggling with injury issues and Reese was sick and then and then he played against West Ham and Mateo Kovacic has kind of been playing like more minutes than maybe he should have so I understood this as being Reese James since they talked about Reese James here um but Kovacic was also with him so I'm not 100% sure. It says, there was no issue yesterday. I hope there won't be an issue. Is he ready to start? Yes. He can't play 90 minutes. It's on us to take how we manage the minutes. Um, so I don't know. I thought it was about Reese. Maybe it's about Kovacic uh, because I thought Reese was 100% fit. So let's see. Um, 
if you, then he was asked about Aubameyang. If you're going to wear a mask, you may as well be a superhero. And we know that Chelsea players have a history of just turning into absolute beasts whenever they wear a mask for some reason. It's like, don't put any further ideas into Aubameyang's head. I'm pretty sure he has his own. When he scores, he can celebrate. celebrate. First of all, he needs to score. He's very ambitious, very focused, hungry to play for us and prove a point. Um... He was asked about Mateo Kovacic's character. So I think this is about Reese James. Uh, Kova is a fantastic player. On top of it, he's a fantastic person and personality. Unbelievable team player. Pleasure to co be a coach for him, for everybody to be his teammate. Kova is a fantastic guy, and it's very important he's with us. It's very emotional for him. He's very happy to be back here. It's a city, it's a country for which he plays with a lot of pride. We're happy that he's back. He's finding a shape. We're happy he's back on the pitch and training. So... Mateo Kovacic, I believe, started his career with Dinamo Zagreb, and obviously he's Croatian, he's going back to Croatia, and so I imagine that that's going to be very emotional for him, and now he's kind of playing on the other side, so it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out and what kind of reception he gets as well. He was asked about his reaction to Edward Mendy being accused of faking an injury versus West Ham. He said, he's available. I didn't feel anything. I didn't hear the accusations. <laughs> you know what happened to me when I spoke about the referee. It was pretty expensive. I'm not going to comment anymore. Uh, he was then asked um, that Aubameyang and Zakaria traveled and why Thiago Silva didn't. And he basically said that Thiago will have a break from traveling after the stress of playing every minute so far in very intense matches. Given his age, I'm sure that he needs recovery. Um, but it's incredible what he's doing, like almost 38. It's insane. But this is a key point that Thiago Silva has not traveled with the team. And so he's not going to be available. So that's everything that Thomas Tuchel had to say. And then and then now we're on to Kovacic. So he's waited nine years to play Dinamo. He said, it's really nice to be here. It's a really good feeling to be in Zagreb, to see other people I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, he says, I'm a Dinamo fan, but now I'm on the opposite side. And he was asked about how he is fitness wise and how all of us looking. He said, I haven't seen him yet, but he's a great player, as we know. So looking forward to having him in the squad. I'm getting better. Fitness is getting better. I had some problems with my knee after the national team. Now I'm recovered and getting better each day. I need my sharpness, but training and games are helping. He was asked if Ob is the player that Chelsea have missed. And he said, we haven't had a goal scorer to score 20 to 25 goals, which is what you need to win the title. For him, it's normal to score goals, and hopefully he's going to do it here as well. He also spoke on the atmosphere, and he said the atmosphere will be excellent. So something for Chelsea fans to take into account. Moving on to Ante Skacic, who is the Dinamo boss. He said, we're not favorites in any of our matches. We'll have a full stadium and we'll try to give everything to compete with Chelsea's quality and find our chances in tomorrow's match. Uh, he talked about how um, how he could tell that Mateo Kovacic was such a special player from a young age. And he also added that it's the biggest game of his career. It's a good start to get Chelsea in the first round. They've got many new players. Chelsea now and Chelsea in November won't be the same team. In my opinion, we have to do what we can to surprise. I thought that this was a very interesting comment because it seems that he knows that Chelsea have made a lot of signings and that the team hasn't fully gelled yet. And that hopefully in November, the team will fully gel. So they're going to try to take full advantage of the fact that we're still trying to figure out what is the best team and where is everybody's best position and sorting all of that out. So I think that that is a really interesting point and kind of something to watch out for. So Dinamo Zagreb, they're currently sitting top of the Croatian League. They have won seven games and drawn one. And the interesting thing is that in those seven games, they've scored 27 goals and conceded 10, which I thought, well, that's a lot of goals to be scoring about four goals a game. So now to talk about the Chelsea perspective. Um, and I'm just going to kind of be making my team here. Let me know how you like this type of video, this type of setup, where I'm kind of just like more streaming and not so much presenting. So in goal, 
I think we're going to see it men's. I think I don't I'm going back and forth because I feel like maybe you rest him and play Keppa in this match. Uh, and Mendy has been making, I uh, feel, quite a few mistakes, and it's a little bit worrisome, but maybe this is a game where he can get some confidence back against West Ham. I feel like for the disallowed goal, he kind of just hit it, and I felt that he needed to do better with it and that we got super, super lucky. But even for their first goal as well, I don't know. I just feel like he's been a little bit shaky recently, but I do think that he will be starting this game. So... Uh, at right center back, we know that Fafana, well, we know that Tiago Silva isn't playing. So I think that that means that we're going to see Kalaba as right center back. I think we're going to see Fafana as center center back. And I think we'll probably see Kulabali as the left center back. Kukorea could also play here as well. This is a position that's up for grabs. In the right wing back spot, I'm putting streams, of course. It's funny that I, I put everybody with their last name and then I'm like, it's we streams, not James. And in the left wing spot, it's got to be Ventuo for me after the impact that he had against West Ham, getting a goal and an assist brilliantly taken as well for me. Ventuo should be starting this match. Now, the midfield is interesting. I feel like maybe we'll see Kovacic start. I don't know, but I feel like this would be a good game for him to start. Maybe he can't play 90 minutes, but a solid 60. And then Kovacic and then Jorginho or maybe Mason comes on for him. But I do want to see him start. And I think we might be seeing Zakaria start in this match. Nagolo Conte is not fit. And I don't know, potentially Jorginho slots in there, but I kind of want to see these two given a go. So for me, those are the midfield too. Up front, I want to see Aubameyang. And I think that, he, well, I don't know if he will start, especially given the jaw issue, but apparently he trained in the mask. He was feeling totally fine. I think that this could be a good game for him to start as well. And I also just want to see him score goals for Chelsea. So for me, Aubameyang starts. I want to see Sterling on the left. And then I think we'll probably see Havertz on the right. Um, this is the team that I would go for. Havertz got his goal uh, against West Ham. Sterling has been a really bright spark. Aubameyang, I want to see kind of how these three play together. For me on the bench, Mason, haven't seen enough from him. Um, maybe we see him in one of these positions, but I just feel like the formation that we've been playing doesn't really suit him so much. Um, maybe we'll see Connor Gallagher as well, but I think rotation-wise, those players have been starting a lot of matches, so give them a rest midweek. We have plenty of games coming up, and this is kind of the team that I want to see play. I really want to see a clean sheet in this match because it's been forever since we've kept a clean sheet, and I want to see some goals. It's not going to be an easy game, but I feel that we've gotten a bit lucky with the decisions. We need to get back to our roots and start keeping clean sheets again. We have a massive problem with set pieces. We've conceded four set pieces already this season. We conceded four in the entirety of last season. And this is largely because Rudiger, Christensen, Alonso, players that are really tall and defended set pieces have now left. And we've seen that Koulibaly isn't so much of an aerial presence. And they're hoping that Fafana can bring that. But it's going to take time to get to that. I think it doesn't help as well that you're kind of changing sometimes. Havertz is defending the near post, sometimes it's Broya, but hopefully this is something that they sort because they need to sort the set piece issue. We need to defend these better. It can't be that we're gifting goals from set pieces every time that a team takes a corner. So I think the main thing for me is sure up the defense and try to get Chelsea back to that fantastic defensive team that we saw win us the Champions League. And then hopefully with these attackers, I mean, Havertz, Aubameyang, Sterling, Chihuahua, Reese James, more than enough to try to make something happen. And Kovacic as well can progress the ball. So this is the team that I would go with. Let me know in the comments what team you want to see starting this game, how you're feeling about it. As for score prediction, 
I, don't know, I feel like they could get a goal. I feel like they could. I'm going to go for 2-1, but I'm hoping for a 2 nil. I hope that we can keep a clean sheet. But just from what I've read about the atmosphere that's going to be there, I don't think that it's going to be an easy game by any means. And I don't want to undermine this team at all. And so I think that we will get the win, but it's going to be a difficult win. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments how you're feeling about the match and have a great rest of your day, evening, whatever time you're watching this. And until next time, I'm out. Bye.